Okay guys, so I think I'm gonna split this video up into two parts. The first part, we're just going to go over the introduction to layouts and we're gonna understand when to use layouts and just understanding the efficiency standpoint. And then part two of this video will be actually showing the progressions on how to work up to a, a full speed layout. So layouts are something that are really marketed in the sport. It's really hard to find anything online that is included in Ultimate Frisbee that doesn't have some image of a layout. But in actual functionality, layouts are really not what you want to do, at least on offense. For offense and catching, layouts are pretty much the hardest possible way to catch the disc. It's very difficult. You have to leave your feet catch the disc most of the time it's going to be one hand because if you're laying out it means the disc is really far and then you have to hold it through the ground and this is something that it's not ideal if you can run the disc out you want to do that because you're going to catch the disc way more times than when you're laying out so the first part of this video i'm going to just go over just efficiency catching and going over those things so this brings me back to the concept in my previous catching tutorial of my four zones. And it's really important to always be catching in the lowest zone possible. By doing this, it will give you the best chance of catching the disc. So a big problem that people have with layouts is they're going to the next zone when they don't need to. It's very important that you stay in the lowest possible zone if you want to be consistent with catching. So what will happen is someone will try to lay out when they didn't need to and then they'll drop the disc. But if all they need to do was just run and catch it low, they would have caught it. And this concept is very true for zones two and three too. A lot of players have a big issue with zone two and they'll try to catch things one-handed when they really don't need to do that. It's just a little bit of a reach and then you catch it two-handed. And by doing this, you'll find that you have way more consistency. So next, let's go over the grip that you should use when you're trying to lay out. So if you can get your hand under the disc, that's the grip that you want to use. So the most ideal grip to use when you're laying out will be two hands under the disc. When you catch like this, it's going to be a lot harder to get the disc because when you catch like this, your hand is already under the disc. So the disc is falling into your hand. When you catch it like this, you have to go to the disc. So it's just harder. So if you can ever catch with your hand under the disc, you want to do it because it's going to give you a better chance of catching the disc. Also, if you want the longest maximum reach you want to turn sideways i'll do a demonstration for you to show you your difference of your reach so this right here is when my hand is straight out and when i turn to the side it's so much farther i pick up a good amount of distance by turning to the side so if you need the most maximum amount of distance you want to go one-handed and turn to the side this is the maximum reach that you can get on a layout. When you catch the disc with your hand on the bottom, you want to flip the disc over before you land, and this makes the fall just a lot smoother, and it makes it a lot easier to hang on to. So when you lay out, you have to commit a full step earlier than when you're running it out. When you're first starting layouts, this can be kind of hard to get used to because you'll end up diving too late. Okay, so that's gonna be it for part one. Be sure to check out part two and like this video if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to share this with anyone you think could benefit from it. This is Ultimate 101 and I'll see you next time.